In a social media fueled world, sadly, the internet provides a sinister platform for the perpetrators of mate crime, a form of disability hate crime that sees individuals befriend and groom vulnerable people with the intention to exploit, abuse and even harm them. Recognising the risks and raising awareness of mate crime is vital to prevent the vulnerable in our communities becoming the victims of abuse or in some cases, even murder. The guys who uh, that we've been in contact with from the South Tyneside Ability Football Group, uh, most of those boys, young men, have a learning disability of some description and they all use social media they all play online games such as FIFA 17 or 18, whatever Europe might be now. And they will tell you that they've ex they've experienced um, name calling, bullying, um, and some had some horrible experiences from others. It was back in 2011, my son was part of a disability football club um, but we quickly found out that most of the players didn't have a disability. So me and one of the other parents decided to take it upon ourselves to um, set our own club up. We got a set of cones, a couple of balls, um, some old strips, um, and then decided to take it to where it is now. But, you know what I mean? It was basically because both the coaches had sons with disabilities. Due to the dangers with social media, we work closely with these adults from Ability FC to help raise awareness of mate crime. And that's where the Who Are You campaign was developed. Very few people have heard of mate crime and, are really, and everybody I talked to are really, really shocked that this is happening. So I think it is definitely something that's under the radar and it's something that, you know, lots of people are experiencing. You know, I worked with a small group of lads who had all experienced some form of bullying, some sort of abuse online and then as that spreads out and we talk to more people with learning difficulties, it, we find that it's really quite common. I think the recent cases of mate crime that we've had, especially um, the most recent one, the, the, the lad who was murdered by so-called friends, and a couple of other cases we've had, have raised the issue. So we look at the case of Brent Martin in Sunderland uh, uh, 10 years ago, uh, um, you know, where a group of uh, uh, people uh, bet five pound uh, to see who could knock him out first and, and leave him lying in a pool of blood. Uh, uh, in horrendous circumstances, that is an awful, awful thing to do. I was born in that estate town and farm in Sunderland where that happened. I was personally devastated that that could happen in a community that was absolutely so close to my heart. You look at the case of Lee Irvin 10 years later, and again, the levels of depravity that you see there and the, the kind of extent of the... Um, injuries uh, uh, and uh, violence that was meted out against him is, is absolutely awful. Slightly different case, but you've got the case of Jimmy Prout, another uh, 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 man from the North East, another vulnerable man from the North East, and some of the behavior that was uh, uh, carried out against him, I, I, it's, I kind of use the term inhumane, but actually that that absolutely captures the behaviour. In my day job I work for the local authority and I work with the, um, say young people who target people with disabilities. So I say the other side of it. You know what I mean? I also have a son with a disability um, who doesn't access tra access any transport by himself because of the targeting on especially on public transport. Um, and it's very frustrating that, you know what I mean, more isn't isn't done. Social media moves so quickly that uh, uh, parents quite often are lagging behind uh, uh, their children and you know it includes uh, uh, um, vulnerable adults in that as well because quite often they are, are very very comfortable uh, using the internet and using social media uh, um, you know you, you quite often find uh, um, young adults with conditions like um, Asperger's or autism who are who are comfortable uh, uh, using social media. And somebody made a Twitter account to tend to be me on like, Twitter and 
and like one at like two of them thought they talked to like this person and the thought it was like me talking and it wasn't and the dad managed to like chuck down like a foot up there who wasn't maintaining it. They thought they were chuck down in 24 hours. Then I took the evidence to trial to the, to the teacher. I was frightened, angry, because my friend thought it was like going mad with me, and they thought it was me. It wasn't. It was somebody else pretending to be me. And I was frightened, mad, and frightened, no. It's important I signpost people to. Um, to get the help and support that they need. There's lots of tools out there, as we say, for children. You know, and I think the, the concern from us about trying to get the right resources for adults is about not being patronising. So if you say to them, here's a little DVD, it's been made for children. Is that the right thing to do? So we're trying to find something which is unique for them. We need to mobilise communities to look out for the vulnerable people in their communities and sometimes take note when uh, people who may have bad intent uh, uh, put themselves alongside vulnerable adults and potentially exploit or, or abuse them. And kind of, I suppose, ask the question, who are these uh, uh, vulnerable adults in the community? And uh, who are the people who are trying to befriend and abuse them? I mean, having, having loads of different abilities in one place at one time, um, obviously it brings the social side, but being able to access football at their level on a weekly basis and play around the country is huge. You know, these lads have never had social inclusion within school sport, so yet they've got a club now which is accessible for all for disabilities, and it's their club. People say it's a disability football club, but we make it as professional as we can, and we have with the track suits, everyone looks smart, with the same badge on. Yeah, and it improves a lot of people with disabilities, like, like some, like some, everyone thinks, oh, people with disabilities always go to a special needs school, but they're in everywhere, in your workplace, your mainstream schools, primary, anywhere, you know what I mean? But people have to accept disabilities do happen. One parent actually had phoned us up and said, I was really worried about me, me child. He wouldn't, he wouldn't cut those, is there anything we could do? So what we did was invite them down, not to play football, to talk to them, to be at the club, let his mum go away for half an hour, then the next time, an hour, to the point where I think he lost, I think he's lost about five or six stone, and the point now where he's, he's not out, he's not in his bedroom, he's now going out, accessing stuff in the community with a personal assistant, which is fantastic. Somebody once described to me the online space as being a wild west for criminal behaviour in, in terms of your ability, if you were, if you had bad intent, to be able to almost fish for a victim online. At the time when I was a kid, I was overweight, so intimidated, um, heartbroken really, because you don't get, you get judged on what you have, and what you look, what you dress, you get judged on everything. And I hope that schools introduce sort of lessons on mate crime and e-safety and I hope that, uh, I hope it's not just special needs schools that are doing that, I hope it's sort of across the whole country that in all educational settings that people are made aware that this, this kind of crime is wrong, you know, this is, technology is the future isn't it, so we need to make sure that the next generation are going to be safe and are going to be happy and they're not going to be victims of this awful crime. It's great that like organisations want to come and, and help us get the message out there that you're saying is what these lads do on a weekly basis but also the fact that bringing out socially about you know i mean the problems that is still out there, out there for disabilities you know i mean to me having organizations come and make it more aware for hate crime mere crime it needs to be done i'm i'm a very proud northeastern lad born and bred i'm uh, uh, so pleased to be involved in the who are you campaign because actually i would hate people to think or, or i wouldn't want people to think that the northeast that these types of things are commonplace. 
in the northeast, and that you know there's an acceptance around these things happening occasionally. Uh, uh, so I'm really pleased to be involved in the Who Are You campaign because actually it's about saying we don't want these things happening in our communities. The northeast of England, if it's if it's uh, famous for one thing, it's about that friendly solidarity, warm warmth that you get from the north. You hear it lots and lots of times. And part of that friendly, solidarity, warmth has got to be about looking out for our most vulnerable members of our communities. I don't know who, who, who originally said the, the quote, but actually you should judge a society, judge a community, not on how it looks after it or celebrates its great and good. It's about how it looks after its most vulnerable victims. That's the test of the quality of a community. And what I'm saying, or, or, or what the Who Are You campaign is saying, in a broader sense, is these are our, some of our most vulnerable people. Let's look after them as best we can. Let's raise awareness of the issue. Let's try and build their resilience. But actually, let's mobilise a bit of that northeastern spirit to look out for, for these vulnerable people in our community. Think before you link, hashtag who are you? 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 Think before you link, hashtag who are you?